Think back to some of the earliest games that you remember playing. Maybe it was Connect 4, Tic-Tac-Toe, Checkers. You got a little bit older and you decided to learn chess or Go or Backgammon. Maybe your grandmother was in a cribbage league and she taught you how to play that so you'd be her practice partner. Either way, a lot of these games have one thing in common. They are all abstract strategy games. And I think that this abstract nature of these games is what led them to survive the test of time and why they are taught almost generationally. You see, an abstract game is something that really strips down all parts of a game into really a distilled simple form where you just have the, board, the game board, the pieces, the rules, and maybe some small ancillary other pieces. But it really removes all of the luck from a game. There's no dice rolling in these. There is no shuffling a deck of cards in this. Right, All the information in the game is going to be available to both players and it's really just a test of skill between the two people playing it. And I think that is that simple nature that really draws people into these abstract games and why they're so well regarded and kind of survive for so long. Right, They all follow that old adage of being easy to learn and hard to master. And so as I searched for what is the modern interpretation of an abstract game, how do you take these simple rules and combine them with the kind of modern sensibilities of, of current games to make something enjoyable, but not kind of overloading it with stuff and losing that abstract, simple nature. And while searching for games, I found something called Onitama, which is a game I wanna talk a little bit about today. You see, Onitama is a game that I think distills what I love the most about chess, that intensity of moving your pieces back and forth, never wanting to give anything up to your opponent, and really simplifies it into a nice five by five grid with just five pieces. And now the real appeal of Onitama comes from the way you're going to move these pieces. You see, unlike chess where everything has a predetermined way it moves, the way you move your pieces in Onitama is going to be different every game. You will be dealt two movement cards, your opponent will be dealt two movement cards, and there'll be one in the center of the table. And these movement cards are going to show how you're able to move each of your pieces. And after you spend one of these movement cards, you're gonna take the one from the center, and your opponent is going to gain access to that movement card. Always going round and round of giving your opponent one, your opponent's gonna give you one, and it leads to a lot of cool and agonizing decisions of how can you lock your opponent into a position where you'll be able to capitalize on where they are. And so there's three types of movement cards in Onitama. There is blue cards that have left-hand symmetry, there's red cards that have right-hand symmetry, and these neutral colored cards that move you to the center and either to the left or to the right. Not as drastically far, but they give you more flexibility. There's also two ways to win in Onitama. One is to get your sensei on the opponent's dojo. The other way is to capture your opponent's uh, sensei. And so you're gonna be moving your four apprentices and your sensei in a way to either capture you know, the dojo or the other person's sensei. So really pretty simple rules. Um, you could probably teach this to someone in like a minute or two. And I think that is a big part of the appeal of abstract games in a whole. And so I would say one weakness of Onitama is when you deal out these cards, sometimes you get a lot of blue cards or a lot of red cards, and it loses a lot of that dynamic movement where everyone's moving their pieces in kind of opposite directions. It loses a little bit of that interactivity. So sometimes if we get too many of one color, we'll just shuffle them up and deal again. And I know before I said there's no dice rolling or card shuffling in an abstract game, and there is none, no randomness in Onitama. Sure, the actual movement cards are going to be dealt out differently, but once they're locked into the game, that's it. Those are the five moves. You know that information for the entire time. You can see what moves your opponent has and what's in the center. And so it's, you know, that information is known, and that's what leads to a lot of the fun thinkiness of this game. I think that the variability and the simplicity is really what makes this game shine. This is one of the few games where my dad will ask me to bring it over specifically, and so that's always a good sign for a game as far as its accessibility. And since you do have that change in the movement cards, it makes every game feel a little different. I think for ancient games like chess, right, something just a consequence of being that old and being so well studied is that people go in with this kind of meta knowledge of chess, and I, sometimes that detracts a little bit from the enjoyment. If two people are equal playing field, yes, it's awesome. But sometimes having that knowledge going into it can really throw a game off. But with Onitama, since those movement cards are going to be different every time, you know, everyone's a little bit on a different playing field. Sure, you can get experience and you get very good at this, but there's always gonna be that little bit of an element of, that's gonna change things, which I really enjoy. And finally, Onitama looks very nice. It comes with a great neoprene mat, 
the actual student and sensei pieces are made out of nice big plastic pieces. The movement cards have this beautiful calligraphy and they're very easy to see where you can move on them. They also have these nice little quotes for them. It just, the whole thing feels very elegant and kind of almost older than it is. And I think it gives a nice kind of effect to that, an illusion of being this older game, even though it's really not too old. I would say that it still passes the abstract litmus test though. I could replace every piece of Onitama with a bunch of different colored cubes and blocks, and it would still be as enjoyable of a game. It doesn't rely on that kind of martial arts theme. Sure, it adds to it, but it is not at all necessary to playing the game and enjoying it. And so what if maybe the martial arts quote unquote theme isn't really your speed, or maybe this seems a little too simple for you? There is another abstract game I came across while searching for something like this, and it's a game called Santorini that we got from our local library of all places, which we really love. We actually think I might like it more than Onitama, if I'm being honest. And it's more of a game where you have to build up a building up to three stories on this grid, um, but it also has the option, because it has this kind of Greek theme to it, of playing with Greek god powers, which kind of give everyone a different player power, which makes it, I think, non-abstract, but it makes it, you can play it with no god powers and it's an awesome abstract game, or you can add in the god powers and make it more of a kind of thematic, you know, game that's a different kind of fun, but not purely abstract. But highly suggest that one if you are searching for some uh, more modern abstract. And so that's Onitama. It's a game I'm really glad I found, and I think that the abstract genre is one that's really interesting. I know there's a ton out there. That abstract genre has grown so much, and it's so fascinating what people can do with these kind of simple rule sets without going too crazy and still keeping it simple to learn and hard to master. So what's your favorite old time uh, strategy game or abstract strategy game? Was it chess, kind of what I played growing up? Maybe something else. And what's your current favorite abstract game? I really, like I mentioned, I love Onitama and Santorini, but I know there's tons out there. So I'd love to hear about what you think uh, is the next abstract game I should check out. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more content like this. I also have an Instagram and Twitter where I post thoughts and pictures of games I'm playing throughout the week. I'd love to see you there. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.